So I'm Juan. Today I'm gonna talk about uh, building an open source webcam with a Raspberry Pi. And uh, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, slide two. All right. So in this talk, um, I'm mainly gonna talk about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how can we all achieve some uh, results with it. And um, thank you to all the contributors that I have uh, seamlessly uh, seen, uh, all the pictures here. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna talk quickly about what I'm doing. I'm building a firmware that transform your Raspberry Pi Zero, um, or soon to be four, to a very powerful webcam. What I mean by this is uh, it actually comes with a quite high quality sensor and you can use a lot of lenses with it, uh, just like you can use with a professional camera. Um, it runs open source software in it and with a lot of control and fine tuning that you can do. Um, I will explain more later. And it doesn't only stop just uh, at the webcam. You can make it a document camera, uh, a microscope or a telescope. So why I'm doing it, um, the reason is uh, there's a pandemic going on. So I work a lot from home. So I have to do a lot of Zooms and I have lots of free time on my hands. So uh, could as well put it to good use. Um, Sometimes I do host live YouTube meetings and uh, I kind of research it myself. Um, what kind of like streaming equipment that I should use. So it turns out each kind of streaming solution um, kind of suck in a different way. We have laptop webcams, which are very um, readily available, but they, you know, have horrible quality 720p. And it's been that way since like you know, eight years ago, right? Um, you can buy a very uh, high-end MacBook uh, for $2,000. The, the camera, camera quality still is potato. So uh, some people have come to uh, different solutions. They use uh, phone cameras as a webcam. It's nice. Uh, however, you often have to connect the camera to, uh, th to the computer through a network. So you have to run the software on the camera, on the uh, phone, and you have to run a piece of another software on the host OS. And so with that combination of um, phone operating system and host OS, you have a very a lot of architecture to support and cross OS and cross hardware support is horrible. Uh, and they are not plug and play. Um, you are like kind of like depend on the developer to kind of find a solution for you. Um, and no one cares about Linux, right? Um, some people have pro cameras. Uh, so they are very high quality. Uh, they often use a DSLR or mirrorless uh, camera to kind of uh, use as a glorified webcam. So they are expensive, bulky, and cumbersome to set up. But that's, that's very nice uh, if you can afford it. USB camera are nice, but they are in short supply and the quality varies and the OS support you often, if you want to fine tune that uh, webcam, you have to use a vendor kind of software in order to uh, tune the webcam. So again, no one really writes software for, for Linux to tune your webcam camera. Um, so why don't we fix it to a Raspberry Pi, right? Uh, it's cheap, it's, uh, you can have good quality uh, sensors, um, you can have good customization. Uh, it's light, uh, you can carry it everywhere, and it may have cross-platform uh, support, hopefully, with, a, with the right solution. So let's see. Some people may ask, you know, Juan, you are just like writing another kind of uh, solution for Raspberry Pi. Um, and I, I kind of see that, uh, you know, like in grad school, I used to work on the NVIDIA GPU and uh, they changed from the, uh, being a graphic card to a GP GPU, that's general purpose GPU. I kind of tend to think the same way about the Raspberry Pi. 
um, as a GT gadget, that is general purpose gadget, because it's so ubiquitous and cheap, got a lot of interfacing IOs, um, um, you know, and it's very easy to get uh, anyone started. However, um, Raspberry Pi projects are kind of like have some gotchas if you uh, think about it. Um, if you want to use it as a dedicated device, you rather not think about it as a Linux computer that run, can run anything you want. You may want a dedicated firmware for it to do just one purpose and do one purpose well. Um, it's a gadget that happens to run Linux instead of a Linux computer that happens to be a gadget. And that's very important as I can, uh, I will uh, explain later on. And so uh, how to get started with this? Uh, basically, you only need to start with a sensor. Uh, that's a Raspberry Pi camera. And you uh, put it into a Raspberry Pi with a nice case and um, just write the uh, show me uh, webcam firmware on the SD card and you have a USB webcam, uh, simple as that, end of story. But um, the, the fun really, really begins when you use the high quality uh, sensor on the right here um, uh, that the Raspberry Pi Foundation um, provide with, um, with their, uh, in the, on their store. And then you can play with it. Now, what I mean by that is that you can um, put a lot of lenses on it. Uh, so here, as you can see, um, on the left, uh, like some of the, uh, the lenses that you can use. Um, and with them, you can have vastly different um, quality um, as, and field of view, as you can see on the right. And um, you or you can adapt to different purposes. For example, if you want to open your yoga class at home, right? You would want a, a lens that can, um, you know, give you a, a full view of the room. Or if you want to do just a, a talk like me, you may want a, a, a closer zoom uh, camera. So um, that all is possible with the uh, high quality uh, um, uh, sensor and the lenses uh, that uh, come with it and you can buy from third party. So what else can you do with it? Um, for education, of course. Uh, so here is a, a picture from Dr. Don Biener um, from my old uh, college. And he is uh, concocting a, like a custom setup over here on the left um, that he used to teach math. And as you can see, it is it requires a, a very special setup where you need a fixed focus because you don't want your webcam to kind of hunt for your kind of guess the focus and uh, you know, zoom on your hands when you are presenting it. You want a very fixed setup that have, you know, a, a crop of just your piece of paper to teach. So here, as you can see, the one of the requirements is that distortion has to be minimal and we have a lens for that. So that's very nice for teaching, uh, you know, um, in the pandemic. And um, so what else? Um, you can use it for um, discovery and sharing as well. As you can see here on the left, they have a Raspberry Pi Zero <laughs> mounted on top of a microscope. And uh, on the right, you can see um, a cell that is uh, magnified by the microscope. And uh, what is special about this setup is that uh, it requires a very special kind of tuning to the image. For example, with this um, microscope setup, you have to rotate the image. And that is done through an interface that we um, provide for the camera through a zero interface. Just any thing that can talk zero can talk to the camera and configure it. And you can see the result on the fly. So, and once you save it, it's saved for everything. So you bring that microscope set up to another computer. It will work as expected. So not only discovery and sharing of science, um, you can do it for fun as well. Um, here you can see a lot of 3D uh, 
cases uh, printed for it. You can use as vanilla of a setup as a normal webcam on the uh, top uh, middle here, or you can make it as fancy as you like and um, an user of the uh, of the um, software also sent me a um, picture of him making a case for the camera that looks like an octopus. And the um, the cool thing is the light um, uh, the the lights uh, will turn on and the octopus eyes will will show up when uh, when when it's in use. And so, why is it all important? Uh, I think it's uh, important for a couple of reasons. You need one firmware for all needs. Uh, it works on all OS. It saves its setting on the device. And you don't need a proprietary app to, uh, that runs on the host OS, which often to be Windows and Mac OS to, for it to run. You, anything talk zero can configure it. And one standardized hardware to roll all needs, uh, it can adapt it to whatever application you want. You can reuse it. Um, use it for your yoga class, use it for your science class. Uh, that's especially, I think, important for developing countries where um, teachers don't have a lot of, uh, you know, resource to, to spare. Um, it saves money, cost, and training. Um, hardware is cheap and readily available almost anywhere in the world for the Raspberry Pi. So um, I think that cannot be said for many other uh, software uh, and hardware solution. And uh, you can say, oh, yeah, the US, you know, bring it to Asia and it will work, work the same, right? That's really, really nice um, property of the Raspberry Pi. For developers, I think um, there's not much to be said, but um, to make it happen, um, there's a Oh, a USB on the uh, on the Pi that's unique in red over here. That's called the OTG port. It can be configured either as a host or a device. When it configured as a device, it can act as a USB gadget. And you configure that gadget to a system called Config FS on Linux. It has a C-based core that streams the image from the real camera to the um, virtual camera. That program is called UVC Gadget, and uh, that's maintained by uh, Peter, um, who is joining with us today. Uh, thank you, Peter. And um, and we put it all together by a um, distro based on um, that's our Sony webcam code. It's only 300 lines of code for the whole repo that we maintain. You take uh, a couple of hours to understand. Boots really fast, five seconds. Uh, the image is really tiny. 64 megabytes will fit uh, will fit everything. Um, the root FS is read only, so you can disconnect the power to it anytime, and it will not corrupt. The serial interface that gives you root, um, and you can change anything. Um, by the way, if you want to learn how to make your own build root based firmware that does one thing and one thing only, show me webcam is a great uh, place to start. So what I learned from this project is um, uh, it's a project that I do for fun. And I learned that you can have a day job and a hobby. Um, you just have to learn to limit yourself in terms of scope, what you want to do with a hobby. And um, that didn't work well for me in the last project because I tried to kind of like make an infotainment for the car. And it's like, it turns out to be too much of a, a too broad of a scope for me to do. And even though people are interested in it, I don't have time to maintain it. Um, the part that I still have to be hands on is to encourage and review people's contribution to the project. The part that I'm hands off is to trust and ask for help from great people in the community to help maintaining the project and different parts of it. So how to handle open source firmware project? Um, it has to, I think, uh, it has to scratch a popular itch. Uh, for a lot of people, it has to have a standard and easy to obtain hardware that everyone can get. Um, it has to be easy for people to understand it, easy to validate, build, and test any build. Um, in fact, you can uh, build the Xiaomi webcam firmware without just actually having a built computer. It will build on GitHub CI. So any commit must work and must pass certain quality tests. And in fact, you can download any commit on the GitHub repository of Xiaomi webcam, and it will likely work. 
right? Um, so the thing, I, I have a lot of things that I will, um, I hope to get improved over time and uh, a lot of plan for the future. For example, I really want to the camera to just zoom on my face uh, at the same time, you know, if I'm like kind of tilted on the, on the frame, right? Um, but that's for the future. So anyway, that's, uh, that's it. Uh, if you want to learn more about the project, just uh, check out the uh, GitHub repository and uh, show me webcam.org. Uh, sometimes I block at my blog as well. Uh, so that's uh, the place that you can um, you can learn about it. So I will um, I will turn to the um, to the questions to answer, and uh, I will demo a little bit in the meantime. Right. So let me uh, try to share a screen. And uh, oh, I cannot share my screen. Oh, here. Let's see. Huh. A lot of things will go wrong. Just uh, be ready for it. All right. If you, uh, in the meantime, I'm happy to uh, to answer uh, the question from the audience. So here, oh, let's see. I can get to the camera interface from here. So I'm on route over here, and uh, let's see here. I will have to put the presentation on the other window and uh, camera control, right? And you see my face on the presentation. I'll do a flip. Mm. I can change my contrast and saturation. That's uh, standard stuff. But uh, look what happened. Mm. Now I'm inverted. So that's the kind of uh, customization that I can do. So from now, I'm just going to be uh, rotated here. And uh, I can play with this all day long. That's it. That's it for me. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Juan, for your insightful presentation.